Coming up on Frontline Police. There's no invitation required when special ops come a-calling. Is there anything you want to tell me about that might be inside the premises before we start searching? A deaf man reports he's been burgled. The police are on the hunt for the suspect. Police, open the door. We're now going to effect entry. Police! That's him up there. And I'm not hanging around as we're in pursuit of a man who has a warrant out for his arrest. I just saw him from the balcony. You see him right over there. Big block of flats. The operational support group are the reinforcement behind Essex Special Ops. Police station! When there's a job to be done and it looks like things could turn nasty, then these are the officers who step up to the mark. It's Friday night and the OSG are making a house call. Uh, tonight we're going to, we've had some information that there's been uh, some drug dealing going on from the premises. You never know what you're walking into. Some could be high on drugs. Um, you know, we make sure when we go into a premises, there's a lot of shouting, um, you know, police, police. We let people know who we are when we go in. You know, if there is drugs in there, if you've got the threat of, you know, other people could be breaking into the place. So the last thing we want to do is them thinking that we're those people. They've arrived at the address. It's a peaceful suburban road. There are eight officers on tonight's operation and they've come equipped with the Enforcer battering ram. But there'll be no door ramming just yet. The police have the keys to the communal front door. It's time to move in. Just as they prepare to force entry on a second door, it opens. Police! 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 Come here! Brothers! 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 Go, go, go! Don't! Don't struggle! Don't struggle! Don't be resisting! Tell us! Stop resisting! Stop resisting! Stop There are five people in the flat. The first job is to contain everyone. Huh? What? You got anything going to hurt anyone? Permissive. Yeah, all good. The fact that these two ran off when they saw us leads me to believe that we're going to find something, but it's not matter where it's going to be at the moment. In the back of the yeah. premises, we've got another three. As the dust settles from the initial commotion, the occupants have time to reflect on what has just happened. Now we've got them all detained, we can do it slow time now. We've got vehicles turning up, we'll start transporting these people back to the police station, so then we can perform a nice safe search of the premises. All right, is there anything in your pocket, or anything that's gonna hurt me? All right, this has been searched in here. So when you get out the other end, if anything's in here, it's yours. Yeah, I'm gonna come in with him. Mind your elbow. Whilst Paul escorts two of the suspects to the van, the other officers begin the search. This is a job you've got to take your time with. The last thing you want to do is put your hand down the side of a sofa and bring it back with a needle sticking in it. Um, is there any needles or anything that we can harm ourselves? I don't in? think so, but don't I think don't so, know. Don't OK. I'll say what they're doing, they'll finish searching that part of the, part of the flat, all right? I'll move you two in there. We'll then do this bit, OK, and then we're done. I Who's been staying here? Well, I don't know a few of them have, so I don't know which one. Right, and are you telling me you don't want to be here? Yeah, no, I don't want to be here, no. Time to go loads of times, but no. Paul's returned from custody to help with the search. One uh, girl had about 100 quid on that. Nothing else? No. They're going to hold them and hold themselves until we complete the search. We're looking for a small amount of drugs. Uh, you know, it could be something probably that size, a ball of that size, and we're trying to find it in all this mess, so it's going to be a bit of a, bit of a search. Believe me, when it comes to nasty jobs, rifling through a drugs house is pretty much as low as you can get. Brett. Oh, can't stay now. <laughs> That's probably on the par with the worst, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's not nice. Not nice at all. Just in this bed alone, we have a knife, a nice blade, screwdriver. 
Yeah. And I believe. Yeah. Another Stanley blade there. So again, one of the many hazards. Um, gladly, he was, a, he was asleep when we got in here, so he had the handcuffs on him before he even woke up. Bed. Another blade. Methadone. Job done. But that looks like it's probably fine. Amongst all the chaos, it looks like Brett has uncovered something. I'm resting on suspicion of being possession of class A drug. Woke you up, didn't it, fella? We'll let you go back to sleep then, mate. Okay. I'm not sure if it's in better condition before or after the search. All done. It's been a slow, mucky job, but a vital one. Not every raid is going to uncover a major seizure. The police found no evidence of drug dealing, but tonight's raid is another success in Essex Police's commitment to tackling drug crime. Still to come on Frontline Police. Hello, it's the police. If you can hear me, make a noise. Officers leap into action when a lady dials 999. This driver gives white van man a bad name. Uh, it's unbelievable that someone could drive like that, uh, as dangerous as he was, with absolutely no license. You had a bit of drink tonight. And a suspected drink driver has spurred a road worker into action. Yeah, I was reaching to the keys out, because it's not being funny, there's a lot of men down there. Then we're going to get you yeah. to blow into a machine at the police station. Back in custody, the officer's patience is tested. Can you give us a couple of specimens of breath then? And what if I don't? I'm heading back to my roots with the Essex Special Ops. They've already raided a suspected drugs den. And now I'm about to start my shift with the operational support group. So Friday night in Essex, one of the, the busier nights for any copper. Yeah, um, one of the good nights. We're straight out on the road, headed for Canvey Island and in no time, Paul has spotted the night's first stop. Paul just saw a driver of a car there chatting on the phone as he's driving along, so he's just going to um, go and have a word with him. He's got his phone to his left ear, it was, okay. which it looks like he's... Yeah, he's still got his phone on, but look at it. Yeah, he's still on the phone now. This fella must be having a blinding chat. He's oblivious to the blue lights in his rear view mirror. You know why I stopped you, didn't you? I haven't got a clue. Well, the reason I stopped you is for using your mobile phone. He's just having a chat with him, probably do a few checks. Make sure he's got a license, make sure he's got insurance, make sure the car's taxed, roadworthy. I saw you coming down Lodge Lane. I've turned around, you've been on your phone from Lodge Lane until you got onto the A13. Um, um, he didn't answer, so I put the phone right. down and I phoned up the other friend of mine. Yeah. So I don't need to lecture you, mate. You know the score, didn't you? Uh, absolutely. All right. It's, it's all in order. I mean, the fact that he was on his phone for so long, I mean, he was, uh, didn't know I was behind him. I, he's going to get a ticket for that. There'll be points on his licence and a fine, £60 fine. We've all been there. The mobile rings, you haven't hooked up the hands free. His big mistake, he answered it. It is going to be points on your licence for this. All right, 60 pound fine and three points in your life. It's the first time I've got the car out as well. Is it? Yeah. And don't tell me it's the first time you ever got your phone out as well when you're driving. You all right? No, not really. No. I'm so annoyed with myself because I've got hands free. You've got hands free as well. This is the bit now where you want the wind to blow it away, isn't it? You, got free, you haven't got points, yeah? You're going to get free for that. Don't get any more. All right. Take it easy when you pull out from here, it's a fast road, mate, yeah? Take it easy. As evening turns to night, Paul takes me on a guided tour of the delights of South Essex. And believe me, we see it all. Yeah. Having dinner here? She got a frying pan out. A Romanian family having a car park picnic party. Is this one your car, sir? Is this right? Do you have your oh, driving right. licence on you? This fella reckoned he didn't need an MOT. When did you get it done? That's an old one, isn't it? What'd you drink too quick? And policeman turned paramedic when Paul checked out these boozed up boys. Oh, nice. Pavement pizza. So far, so busy. 
Yeah, I'm on Canvey Way now. I make my way. Just had a call. It sounds like a member of the public has. Um, seems like they've had some sort of altercation with a driver that um, is apparently drunk and they've taken the keys off him. I think it was a road worker that stopped them out and he's detained him. It seems the incident has taken place at some roadworks. Paul heads straight to the man in charge of the lights. This gentleman here? Yeah. Lovely. Uh, does he look what happened? Oh, he hasn't been no problem. He oh. jumped, it was a red light, so I've looked down and I thought, you know, what are you doing? Like, yeah. pulled over the window, instantly knew he was drunk. He said, yeah. just let me go, let me go. I just reached and took the keys out, because it's not being funny, there's a lot of men down there. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm oh, fine. There's um, roadworks here, as you, as you can see, and this fellow was apparently um, went straight through a red light, went straight towards it. There's obviously steam rollers, there's lorries, there's all sorts here. You had a bit of drink tonight? I had a couple of beers, yeah. Just how long ago was that? Um, 20 minutes. Yeah, I can smell out. You've got quite a strong smell of alcohol coming off you. Basically, I'm going to be arresting you uh, for being unfit to drive through drink. Do you understand that? Yes. Sir. What's going to happen, OK? We're going to take you down to the police station. We're going to get you yeah. to blow into a machine at the police station. Yeah. And that'll give us an exact reading of how much alcohol is in your system and whether or not you're fit enough to drive. OK. All right? Yeah, well, okay. I totally what? understand that. Taxi's here. Taxi here. Yeah, I'm sure ordinarily there's no harm to anyone, that fella, but look at all them lorries and whatever else they've got there. Imagine him piling into one of them. Back at the Nick, it's time to book him in. Gentleman's been seen to go through a red light and was stopped from going through a single lane because another car on coming. I was explaining the circumstances of the arrest to the custody officer. If the custody officer decides to, he or she can then authorise detention. I could get to drink tonight, please. Four points. One of the frustrating things about drink drive cases is they still have the same amount of questions that they need to be asked by the custody sergeant that every other prisoner does. But what that does is gives more time for the alcohol to get out of the system. So every copper wants those questions to rattle through as quickly as possible. Paul gets down to the tricky task of searching the man. All right, are you going to be able to flick your shoes off for me? Do me up, yeah. Right. Don't fall over on me, will you? Having finally filled in the paperwork, it's time for the breathalyzer. Penalties for drink driving include at least a 12 month ban, up to a five grand fine, and six months in prison. You happy to do this machine? You are blowing it a couple of times. Do you want to do it? Mm. You don't want to do it? Mm. Mm. Right, I warn you again that failure to provide either of these specimens will render you liable for prosecution. Do you now agree to provide two specimens of breath? Basically, if you don't blow into this, you'll be prosecuted and go to court for family to provide. So it's your choice now if you want to blow now. No. You don't no. want to blow? No. Don't think he understands the seriousness of what Paul's saying. Do you want to give us a couple of specimens of breath then? And what if I don't? You'll be prosecuted. I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get my own solicitor. You'll be prosecuted. To, to fight the case. He doesn't understand he's going to get charged, he will get prosecuted and he may well get a bigger and stiffer penalty than if he does blow. If he blows, he could be under. If you fail to provide this, you'll be going to court, simple as. I'm going to go to court, wouldn't you? Well, if you don't blow, if you don't blow over the limit, then you won't do, will you? It's as good as being... Silly boy. Come this way. Well, you tried. So you only have to give him a couple of chances and you gave him about 20. Just chop my water down. Take care, mate. I'll speak to you a bit. Crime is a 24-7 business, and so is crime busting. The Chigwell Response and Patrol team are starting the night shift. Back on the road. Got some warrants as well. We've had an abandoned 999 call. 
what we've got is somebody's dialed 999 and said nothing down the phone so we treat it as an emergency every time in case they've been stopped from speaking or they're too scared to speak um, we've traced the call to an address and we're going there now to see what's happening nine times out of ten we're it's nothing, nothing. It's nothing. the yeah. kids the kids done it or it's an accident, whatever, but obviously treat every emergency as if it is one. When they arrive on scene, Mark and Amy get straight on it. I'll go around the back. It might be three in the morning, but this isn't the time for pussyfooting about. Hello, it's the police. If you can hear me, make a noise. It looks like there's, there could be an elderly female in there. There's a Zimmer frame at the bottom of the stairs. We're going to force entry to make sure that she's all OK. To use my big red key to get in. Hello, it's the police. You OK? So we're going to have to force entry to your house. We've got to make sure you're OK, all right? The key to a successful forced entry is to open the door with as few blows as possible. Here you go. Yeah. Look away. Police! It's noise. You okay? It's noise. It's the police, madam. It's the, it's the police. police! You've called 999. Got a very elderly lady up there. She doesn't appear to remember calling us, but. We're not sure whether or not it's a, a faulty line. It's a risk we can't take, so we force entry um, to the premises, as you've seen, and uh, just make sure everything's OK. In a case like this, the police cover the cost of any damage. We've spoken with the lady. She's got a fault on the line. Um, she's getting Virgin to come out tomorrow, so that's what we like to see on 999 call, which turns out where everybody's all in order. And she's, she, yeah, she's fine. Ready? Done. It's gone four now, and this is when things normally quieten down. What are you thinking? Warrant to uh... Yeah. What's the time though? Four o'clock, got three hours. Do you want to do one? Yeah, let's do one. What numbers you got over there? 49 to 239. Nice. But Mark and Amy like to keep themselves busy. We're going to try and execute an arrest warrant now as for a breach of a court order. We're going to see if he's in. Up, it's still very early in the morning, but Mark is eager to make certain that the occupants know he's there. Please, open the door. Well, they might be very sound sleepers. He's probably in there. He probably knows he's wanted. Yeah, if he's breached it, he knows he's He knows he's breached. Yeah. We've got another one though. So. We get that go. <laughs> This time it's a um, driving whilst using a mobile phone ticket which hasn't been paid. We're here to bring him in and put him before the court first thing in the morning. Police! Hello! Bingo! Yeah, I know what time it is. If you've ever received a police fine and just hoped it would go away, think again. This fella is none too pleased about his early morning alarm call. I've, I've explained to you about four times now. Yeah, no, I said to you, if you can pay the fine, yeah. you won't have to go, but you've told me that you cannot pay the fine. I don't know yet. Yeah. Oh, now you're changing your mind. It's on rest. Quarter past five, Sarge. For the sake of a £60 fine, this fella could be tucked up in bed. On the right, on or off? Uh, how long we got? How long? Yo, you'll be here till at least eight. Yeah, we've been quite productive. Obviously, we established that that old lady was okay. I can sleep soundly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna get some toast in my belly. I'm gonna watch an episode of Peppa Pig, and then I'm gonna get in bed. Peppa Pig? Are you serious? Yeah, that's what I do every night. Then. 
But it's a kid's thing, surely. I love it because it's, it's so easy to watch. You know, Pig's my favourite animal. <laughs> Still to come on Frontline Police. Like just the intercom, so it's definitely in. The ups. That's it up there. And downs of working with a special ops. For what? Must be a footwork from the boys as well. The OSG executes a drugs raid. Now, is there anything you want to tell me about that might be inside the premises before we start searching? And a report of a burglary that's hard to swallow. He's basically woken up with someone in his house. All right. And um, he's kicked his front door in and stolen some of his food. Four years after leaving the force, I'm back with the Essex Special Ops. We've already arrested a suspected drink driver. Don't fall over on me, will you? And later I'll be heading out with the unit as they attempt to serve an arrest warrant. But first, the Special Ops are gearing up for a drugs raid. We're off to Harlow today to um, effect the drugs warrant. We've got uh, six officers with us because obviously we don't know what we might face when we get into the premises. Uh, you know, emotions are running quite high if there's drugs involved and likely to be arrests. The officers of Special Ops are trained to the highest level and they take nothing to chance. I've got a little map of the property. It looks to be a PVC door. Nothing known about whether there's any horrible dogs or anything like that. Obviously it will be a ramit entry, which Dean's gonna do. First one through the door then will be Matt and then we'll deal with what we find uh, when we get in. All right. Briefing over, it's time to head out. An undercover unit has gone ahead of the carrier to make sure the entry squad has as much information as possible. Right, Jimbo reckons the door's half glass. Oh, yeah. So you're going to want to put the um, fountain gloves on. Who's now at the back, Lee? We'll get Jimbo and uh, Silky to do that. Yeah, got it, mate. All right, ready? Everyone's set. It's showtime. Adrenaline pumping, heart rate pulsing. When that door goes through, there's no telling what will be on the other side. Okay. I'm Sergeant Deval from Operational Support Group. We've got a drugs warrant we're going to execute. Now, is there anything you want to tell me about that might be inside the premises before we start searching? If there's anything, let me know. Okay, is there anything else? That is it, is it? Textbook, the boys were straight in there. Is there some more? I'm not gonna open that until I've got sand, in case it all falls out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep that as is. If there are any more suspected drugs in this house, special ops will find them. I'm just going to put you in handcuffs for the time being, alright? So you're under arrest and suspicion of possession of a class A drug. Ready? Drug, run your one here. Yeah, empty. Yeah. I'll give you a 9.5 for that. The double pie, I've got no idea. <laughs> The officer's perseverance pays off. Upstairs, there's been another find. Some cannabis in here. But there's someone else in the house too. The boyfriend of the suspect's daughter. At the moment, the quantity that we've found is really in relation to possession. Special Ops has covered every inch of this house. It's time to take the suspect and his daughter's boyfriend back to the station. Back at custody, these two might look bored now, but with a full strip search to look forward to, they'll soon have something to keep them on their toes. <laughs> I'm checking in for a late shift. 
And on this evening's crime-busting menu, arrest warrants. We'll try and find out where it is and determine whether there's an escape route out the back. They're going to uh, make sure that they've got the relative uh, safety kit on, make sure that they're going to look out for each other, make sure there's no escape routes, and hopefully it's a positive result. The mood in the van is pensive. The fellow we're looking to bring in this evening could be a handful. It's an attempted arrest of someone for a common assault. Go right up to the roundabout and take the third exit. We're moments from arriving. When we get there, we'll be straight on it. The less time we hang about, the less chance there'll be of this fella catching wind that we're on his doorstep. Typically, they're going to try and send officers around the back, make sure nothing's thrown out, make sure no one tries to climb out, jump out. They often do. Turns out the bloke just answered the intercom, so he's definitely in. Oh, is it? I think she's saying it too. I'll wait until they're all here and going together. Hello there. Uh, he's not here, he's just gone down to the shop. All right, he's gone down to the shop, just the local one. Downstairs, yeah. Is that you just passed him? It was, yeah. Oh, was that? I thought that was <laughs> him, right. that's why I didn't say anything. All oh, right, no worries. Who was he to you? Was he your My partner? partner. All right, okay. The man's partner reckons he's nipped down to the shops and is due back at any minute. She doesn't invite us in for a cuppa. An eagle-eyed copper has spotted our man and we're on our toes. It's been a while since I last had to do this and the boys in blue have left me for dust. So they're off, not taking any chances. Yeah. At the moment, mate, we're suspicious of assault. Do not have to stand here with my home defence, do not mention. Is there anything up there? Green question, something like blind court. Assault for what? Anything. Assault for what? Must well. oh, be a footwear from the boys as well. You got anything in your pocket you shouldn't have? No. For, no. for who? What? There's a good couple of hundred metres off there, and they just saw him from the balcony. You see right over there, a big block of flats. One of the officers was at the top of that balcony and saw him walking off at quite a pace. Good result. All we do is take you in heaven in, you alright? He's been getting booked into custody and it's uh, a nice result for the team. Yep, and we've got our way to the next one now, so great result. Good result. The heart of the Essex Special Ops Division are the OSG. Level 2 training means these officers have the skills to force house entry and are experts in dealing with confrontational situations. We've just got a call in from one of our colleagues. It's an aggravated burglary that's just happened in uh, Basildon. So I'm going to go down there now um, and help them gain entry to the suspect's address. And that's it. We'll go and liaise with the unit that they want to see and see what we've got. The policeman on the scene recounts the man's version of events to Alan Simon. Death bloke. Um, and he says he's basically woken up with someone in his house and um, he's kicked his front door in and stolen some of his food and then taken his electric fuse. All right. So he's not an electric. Right. So it's a burglary, not an aggravated burglary. They were grieved, was inside the property on his own by the looks of things. He's, um, I'm sorry, I think he's deaf. Um, but he's, he's been woken up. When he's sort of gone to investigate, he's found a male that he knows inside the property. Simon and Al take every burglary very seriously, but some incidents are hard to comprehend. See, the, the bottom pane of glass is missing. The top is broken as well. And it's broken a fuse, I think, which means that all the, the light's gone, all the power's gone inside the property as well, so... Not inhabitable at the moment, I'm afraid. It's alleged that the suspected burglar took some food and milk. Myself and Simon and Adam, we were, we're going to go to the address where the suspect lives and attempt an arrest there.
When Simon and Al arrive at the address, they keep a low profile. The last thing they want to do is give the suspect a chance to slip away. There's people in that one, so they should be able to see. Bingo. Now let's see if our suspect is at home. What was nicked? Food, basically. Like a four pint of milk, perhaps. It looks like they've found the right address, but no one appears to be in. Al and Simon could force entry, but they need to be certain that the suspect is inside. All they can do is sit and wait. Where are you going to, fella? Uh, he's obviously coming back because that's his mate there. Everyone has their day, don't they? Indeed. I think if he'd have been there, if we'd have seen movement and we'd forced the door, then yeah, definitely you would have got a bit of a, a rush out of it. It would have been nice if we'd have got him. Then I'd have been happy. But. Still to come on Frontline Police. Police open up, no you're in there. The pursuit for the suspect continues. Police! Police, stay where you are! And a motorist is pulled over for his erratic driving in a van. Look at that. Not the best driver in front, is it? Uh, the man you were driving, I thought for a moment you might have been drunk actually. The plot thickens. It's been a roller coaster ride of a week so far with the Essex Special Ops, and I'm back in the briefing room. Fixed penalty notices uh, and arrests where necessary and where appropriate. I'm hooking up with the operational support group as they get ready to go on patrol. So we're out uh, on patrol in South End today, so it should be an interesting shift. Today I'm getting hands on with the unit's secret weapon, the unmarked car. So, out in this today. Yep, that's right. Obviously unmarked. Yep. So, um, how do you find the difference between the two? Uh, it is pretty good because you do tend to catch sort of more offenders, more track offences, that sort of stuff, because people don't see you. It doesn't stand out, it's not the usual thing we use. Right then, let's, uh, let's sure, go. Yeah. Well, cool. When you've been in as many police cars as I have, you soon notice the difference between marked and unmarked cars. When you've got the full Battenbergs on, other road users make space for you and they always seem to be travelling at 69 miles per hour. But when you're in an unmarked car, on our phone. it's a different picture altogether. Got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. First spot of the day goes to DC Wilding. Oblivious to you guys as well. I hope this woman is nearing the end of her call. She's about to be rudely interrupted. Hi there, mind dropping my cab for a moment, please? Thank you. The beauty of this unmarked car just came into its own there. That lady there was just uh, chatting away quite happily on her mobile phone, absolutely oblivious to the fact there's two police officers literally driving along parallel to her. Well, we've already seen she likes a chat. I doubt she'll be able to talk her way out of this one. Uh, the issue I with Paul Drover is we were just chatting on your mobile phone, phone yeah. Was, yes. And we followed you for an awfully long way trying to get yes. your attention as well, yeah, and you're still... Uh, she hasn't really got a leg to stand on with that one. Um, also comes with a fine, £60. Three points on her licence and a £60 fine has left this lady lost for words. Cheers, yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> Now, some people, James, might think that was a little bit trivial dealing with a mobile phone, but as an ex-police officer and a current police officer, they are a bugbear of all cops, aren't they? People on the Absolutely. phone when driving. Yeah, they are. I mean, just at this junction here, we've got three lines of traffic, rush hour traffic. Um, your concentration is not on the road. Um, people can use hands-free kits to, to, you know, speak on a mobile phone. The best thing, of course, is not to use a mobile phone at all whilst you're driving because your concentration's elsewhere. But obviously the lady there, she's holding the phone to her ear, she's looking elsewhere and not concentrating on the road, and it's just dangerous. Yeah. And uh, no real argument from her? Bit of a hands-up? Yeah, no, no. Phone. We've seen her using a mobile phone whilst driving, and she couldn't say very much, and she took it quite well. Cool. Back on the road, the van up ahead has caught James and Brett's attention. 
He's swinging in and out of lanes as well, isn't he, and braking unduly. This van appears to belong to a cleaning company, but this driving is far from tidy. Not the best driver in front, is it? All over the place. This fella is giving white van man a bad name. In fact, pulling stunts like this suggests he could be under the influence. This driving has been absolutely appalling. He's failed to indicate it numerous times. Um, he can't decide which lane he wants. Um, so we'll have a chat with him and see what we can take him to. Hello mate, come and drop me a cab here for a second. Do you know why we pulled you over at all? No, sir. Uh, basically, the man of your driving on the A130. No, because were... I almost missed the exit. Long before that though, on the, on the dual carriageway coming down from Chelmsford, you were right behind somebody, close up behind them. You were changing lanes without indicating, braking unnecessarily. Uh, the man of your driving, I thought for a moment, you might have been drunk actually. For no, 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 Have you got your licence with you? No. You've got ID with you at all? No. I, I don't know what we're doing. So, I keep losing them, so. That's fair enough. This fella might work for a cleaning company, but something about his lack of ID just doesn't wash. Now, how long you held a driving license for? It's not my full driving license, bro. It's a provisional, provisional license. license. Okay. I'm, I'm in test to do that right now. Okay. The plot thickens. I just asked to see the bloke's driving license, and he's just confirmed to them he hasn't actually got one. He's only got a provisional. I'm just trying to find out who's driving at the moment. You have to tell me. He's done this for a job, and um, what the officers are now going to do is make some inquiries with the company itself to see if he told them, oh, I've got a full licence, before he took that job. He's just asking if he can get another driver down here from the, from the company to uh, drive the vehicle away. Seize it. Yeah, seize it. Yeah. Okay. It's unbelievable that someone could drive like that uh, as dangerous as he was, with absolutely no licence. No, with no licence comes no insurance. He's just decided to just, just jump in a van and drive like that with no licence. With the van getting a piggyback to the local pound, the driver's bosses will have to shell out 150 quid before that gets back on the road. As for the driver, with skills like this, the longer he can be kept off the roads, the better. All right, mate. Thank you. Cheerio. On the other side of the county, the OSG have some unfinished business. OK, we're just about to arrive at a address now where we're going to go and um, try and arrest a suspect for a burglary. Um, it's a recent burglary whereby um, yeah, the victim is a deaf male. We've been asked by the uh, target offender to a to go and try and arrest him and uh, bring him in. Perseverance is crucial to solid police work and today is no exception. We've already seen Alan Simon attempt to arrest a suspect for a late night burglary on a deaf man. Would have been nice if we'd have got him, then I'd have been happy. James and Brett are going to have another go at bringing the suspect in. Police open up! When frontline police come a calling, they make it loud and clear. Guys, there's movement inside, confirm you've got the containment on the back. It looks like this fella isn't in the mood for visitors. I saw somebody duck out of view and hide behind a curtain. Um, the TV's on the premises. Um, I believe that he's in there and obviously he's wanted for a, a, an offence at the moment, a burglary. That gives us a power under Police and Criminal Evidence Act to enter the premises. Open the door, police, it's the police. I should all kick it in. Mate, just this way, yeah. Police, open up. No, you're in there. It looks like the officers are going to have to let themselves in. Would you be able to bring a shield and a ramit to the uh, front door for us? I'm just going to shout out one very clear verbal warning. If we don't get an answer at the door, we'll put the door in and um, hopefully find him inside and arrest him. Please open the door. We're now going to affect entry unless you come and open the door immediately. Come 
have you been knocking or something? Yeah, just a tad. Yeah. Uh, bro, if you won't get me awake for I'm so sorry. Uh, the suspect claims that he was fast asleep and didn't hear a thing. Apparently he slept through seven minutes of us banging on the door and shouting in a one-bedroom flat, which is quite surprising. Nevertheless, he's in there and he's the chap we wanted um, to arrest for burglary, so he's been arrested now. Um, when we did enter the premises, we were slightly aggravated by the fact there was a dog in there, quite aggressive, but thankfully didn't attack us. Um, and we got the occupant to calm his dog down and put him on the lead. And we're now about to start searching the premises. And we're looking for items stolen in the burglary. Um, it's food items. The man swiftly dispatched to the local Nick. Milk eggs, bags of noodles, gravy. The suspect was interviewed and gave an account that differed to the deaf man's. No further action was taken. I'm hanging up the stab vest for another week, but what a week it was. Special Ops Stage 2 drugs raids. A suspected drink driver was taken off the road. And even I had to get on my toes when we chased after a suspect wanted in connection with an assault. Nice bit of footwork for the boys as well. They couldn't waste any time and they've got him. Good result. It's all in a day's work for the frontline police. <laughs>